With the window view set up in maintenance, it's pretty simple. We have a <coughs> half turn to open the door. Any time that you are doing performing any kind of maintenance on this machine, it is mandatory that you reach down here to the bottom corner and pull the top plug. The top plug is powered to this machine. You just completely powered the whole machine down. Never unplug or plug any component on this machine, even a change or a dollar bill validator with power on the machine. You take a chance of damage. Plug the machine back in. Top plug, it's a computer plug. Well. Once you've plugged the machine in, the window view will do what we call initializing. The arm will actually go to the top of the machine. It's checking all the components. It'll come down, open the flap, close the hand, go back to the bottom of the machine. Then the LED will say, please close door. It will replace up your revision of software and the machine is ready to go. If you need to calibrate this machine, and the way the window view works, we use calibration. There are reflectors on the ends of the trays right here. There's actually a red light, what we call a forward looking optics, inside the hand right here. The red light rests at home right below the bottom reflector. When we put it into calibration, which we will do in just a second, the hand will actually come up, check these reflectors, come back over to this corner, come up, check these reflectors, and come to the bottom. If it's found all reflectors on both sides, the same amount on both sides, and at a level area, it will be calibrated and ready to go. If it misses a reflector or a reflector has fallen off the tray, you'll get a calibration failure. And it will come back with an error code that says shelf ends mismatched. If that be the case, and you're in the field, these trays are easily removable by lifting up the back end of them, just lifting the tray off, and you can switch this tray for this tray with a reflector because the inside of the two middle rows, the reflectors do not play a part in the calibration, only the outside. In order to go to calibration, we need to go to the mode button. Depending on the model of the view, some of the views had control boards in the upper left-hand corner. The mode button is in the bottom, bottom third center of the machine. This view has the control board down on the bottom right here. In this case, there's a hole and the mode button is right there. So you push the mode button, you bring up diagnostics on the outside. Once you're to diagnostics, while you're at diagnostics, if you would like to check, we have four button programming. Button one is your exit button. Button two scrolls you down. Button three scrolls you back up. And button four is your enter and save button. So while you're at diagnostics, you're, you can hit button four. If you have an error code, it will show up right here. This machine has no errors, so it's error none. If you had an error code that said PDC or VMC, always hit button four again. Go to the submenu, and it'll tell you what that error code is. Then by hitting button, button 4 and holding it for two seconds, you will manually clear that error code out. Button 1 will bring you back out to the main menu. So if we scroll down, in this case to calibration, button 4 enters, PDC software maintenance, we take button 2 and scroll to discovery. Hit button 4, level 0 comes up, we hit button 4 again to get the 0 to flash, button 2, moves us to level two, and button four enters. So now it's saying, please close the door. Sometimes it will ask you button one to start calibration. This one hasn't been calibrated in, in several times, so it automatically goes into it. But it goes up, checks this side, 
it goes to the bottom, checks the other side. Comes back to the home position. It's calibrated and it's ready to go. Once it's been calibrated, the motors take over between the control boards and the motors and it knows which selection to go to when you enter a selection on the keypad. Some other things that you might want to do in programming. Again, hit your mode button and bring up diagnostics. Button two, you can scroll down to test mode if you want to enter that to test bend the machine. Button four and it says vending. Hit button four again and it will say please close the door. It will allow you to make up to five test bins that do not count on your meter reading. Button one brings you back out. Set price. You scroll down to where it says actually set price on the machine. Button four to enter. The first thing it wants to know, do you want to set all selections? Button four to make the zeros flash. Button two will scroll you up through the pricing. Button three will scroll you back down to whatever price you, you want to set. And button four to save it. So we just set the entire machine. Now we can go from there. We can back out. Take button two and it will say shelf one. If we enter into shelf one. The first thing it wants to know, do we want to set all columns on that shelf? Again, button four, get it to flash. We can move price to whatever we like on the entire shelf and save it. Beyond that, button two will take us to column zero. One, two, three, four, whatever column we want to set individually priced. Keep in mind, with the Vendo view, you always start at zero, not one. So it's not one, two, three, four, it's zero, one, two, three, four. The easy way to remember that is if you're on shelf one, column four, you're actually at selection 14. So you can set all columns, you can set individual columns, you can come back out and go down through all five shelves and set any price you want. It's recommended that if you set all to the majority price and then move to your individual selections and set those, set those prices. All Vendo equipment is recommended to be on a dedicated 20 amp circuit with absolutely under no circumstances to run any type of extension cords to power this machine up.